Hi everyone, how's your preparation for the CFA exams? So in this video, we'll be looking at analytical VAR or evaluate risk or what we call the variance covariance method. And this is covered under the level three syllabus in reading 31 on risk management. So in this example, we'll look at Luna who uses the variance covariance method to estimate the weekly VAR for fund W and she assumes that returns are normally distributed and uses a z-value of 2.33 for a 1% probability. So under Fund W, we have two asset classes, emerging market equities and emerging market bonds. And we are given the weightage, the expected annual return, the expected annual standard deviation, and the correlation between the two asset classes and the portfolio market value. And now we are required to calculate the 1% weekly VAR using, for Fund W using the variance covariance method. Now before you start off, just take note that the return and standard deviation are given in annual terms, but the VAR is required to be computed in weekly uh, in time interval. So in that case, we'll have to do a bit of scaling later on. Now first of all, what we have to do is we have to calculate what is the expected return and the expected standard deviation for Fund W. So let's first calculate the expected return of the portfolio. So we'll take the weightage for each uh, asset class. So we have 70% uh, multiplied by 15% return plus the 30% into emerging market bonds for a return of 9%. So if you calculate that, uh, we'll get 13.2% per annum. So if you want to, uh, so we'll need to scale this from per year to per week. Okay, based on the VAR requirement. So one year is 52 weeks. So we'll multiply that by 1 over 52. So that will give us 13.2 divided by 52. So that's 0.2538% per week. Right, then uh, we'll calculate the variance of the portfolio. So to calculate the variance of a two asset portfolio, we'll take the weightage. So that's 70% times 18% uh, So that's 70% times 18% square plus 0 0.3, 30% multiplied by 11% square and then for the covariance term that will be 2 multiplied by the weightage 70% and 30% and then we multiply by the covariance, which is the correlation, 0 0.6, multiplied by the standard deviation of each asset class. So for this, uh, usually if you use your financial calculator, you can make use of the store function. So let's calculate. So for the first term is 0 0.7 times 0 0.18. Okay, then we square it. I'll store under number 1. And then for the second term is 0 0.3 times 0 0.11 that square it, store it under number 2. Then for the last term is 2 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.18 times 0 0.11. Then we store under number 3. Then we sum all the three numbers up, recall 1 plus recall 2 plus recall 3. That's 0 0.021946. For six. I'll take a square root here. So the, top, the standard deviation is 14.8171%. Okay, this is per annum. So when you scale standard deviation, I always remember we have to scale it by the square root of time. So in this case, I'll multiply by 1 over 52 weeks. Okay, and then we have to square root. So this will give us divide by 52 square root so that will give us 0 0.0205 okay in percentage terms that will be 2.0548 percent okay so that's per week now we are ready to calculate the VAR so the VAR for a 1% weekly period so we'll take the return of the portfolio minus the Z value times the portfolio's standard deviation times the market value of the portfolio and then we'll take the absolute value of the return in percentage here after deducting for the standard deviation scaled by Z so that will be 0.2538% okay minus 2.33 if you are using a 1% probability multiplied by 2.0548% 
okay and then we multiply that by 150 million so that would be 0 0.2538 percent minus 2.33 times 2.0548 okay so that's about negative 4.5338 uh, 9 percent this take the absolute sign of course it's in, it is in percentage so we have to divide by 100 and then we multiply that by 150 million which is the market value of the portfolio so that gives us about 6.8 million so that will be our va so we can say that within a one week period there is a one percent chance that the lost okay for this fund could be more than 6.8 million dollars so that's how we calculate the VAR. Always remember to check the interval for the VAR and the time interval given uh, for the return and standard deviation. If they are different, you will have to scale. And be careful when you scale the return and standard deviation.